Um, now, now, now I want to talk about the, the value of orbital refilling. This is also extremely important. So uh, if you just fly BFR to orbit um, and don't do any refilling, it's, it's pretty good. You'll get 150 tons to low Earth orbit and have, no, and have no fuel to go anywhere else. Um, however, if you send up tankers and refill in orbit, you can refill the tanks all the way to the top and get 150 tons all the way to Mars. And if the tanker has high reuse capability, then you're just paying for the cost of propellant. And the cost of oxygen is extremely low, and the cost of, of, of methane is extremely low. So if that's all you're dealing with, the cost of, of, of refilling your spaceship on orbit is, is, is tiny, and you can get 150 tons all the way to Mars. So re automated rendezvous and docking and refilling, absolutely fundamental. So, so then getting back to the question of how do we pay for, for this system, um, th this is really I said, quite a profound, um, I wouldn't call it a breakthrough, but realization that if we can build a system that um, cannibalizes our own products, makes our own products redundant, then all of the resources, which are quite enormous, that are used for Falcon 9 Heavy and Dragon can be applied to one system. Um, in, in our, some of our customers are, are, are you know, conservative and they want to see the they want to see BFR fly several times before they are comfortable launching on it. So what we plan to do is to build ahead and have a stock of Falcon 9 and Dragon vehicles so that, so that customers can be comfortable. If they want to use the old, the old rocket, the old spacecraft, they can do that um, because we'll have a bunch in stock. But all of our resources will then turn towards building BFR. Um, and, and we believe that we can do this with the revenue that we with with the rev with the revenue we receive for launching satellites.